In this video, what I want to do is I want to make it so when we walk up to an item, we pick it up, and when we click on it, I want something to happen. So what we're going to try to do here, this is about my fourth attempt trying it in a different way, is I want to use the class default object provided by the Unreal Engine Reflection System to be able to create an object of this class without actually spawning it, but allowing us to instead call a function on the class that pretty much performs whatever we need it to do. So what I mean by that is we're going to create, you know, just normal class object, just normal pointer to the class. We're going to have a function here that we call. That function is going to alter something in our character. So to begin, what I want to do is I want to create a just a test function to try it out with. So let's do void. Well, it's going to be a U function because I want to call it from Blueprint. So we're going to do Blueprint callable. And I'm just going to set the category to equal tutorial, just like before. We're going to do void. Let's do test interact. All right, let's do test use. And let's give it the parameter, which would be, let's see, I'm trying to remember. Uh, sorry, I've been using Unreal Engine 4 for a while. Uh, I think it's the inventory item, which contains... Yes, so it's the class here. So we're going to do a A item. Let's see, is it static class or I have to forward declare item, don't I? Let's go to the top of our class and forward declare A item, which is this guy right here. So that should allow us to do static or is it, uh, let's see. Remember, what is it for the U object? So we're going to pass in a T subclass of A item instead. So we're going to do T subclass of. The type's going to be A item. And let's give it a name of, let's just do, we'll do item. That's good enough. So let's create the implementation. And we can give it a test. So obviously, if item, just to confirm that it is valid, let's create a test function on it. So let's do a... Uh, I can return an f string test. I don't know test function, and we want it to return just a random string. So our test string, and we're just going to simply print this out to the log. So if item, we're going to do ue log log temp warning text and percent s. So let's set ourselves up so we can print. Now we have to get the class default object. So we're going to do a item. Let's do a, let's give it a name of CDO item equals item dot get default object. Now we can do CDO item test function, or we have to uh, dereference the string. So hopefully when we call test use, we'll get the item. We're going to test it with this logic here. So I'm going to actually wrap this in an if statement to confirm it. Well, just for a safety reason so we don't crash. And print out a log. So I'm going to go ahead and do a couple else's here just to test it with and make sure nothing breaks. Or, well, if it does, I can see where it fails. So I'm going to do failed CDO. And failed item. So here we have all that. So I'm going to go ahead and close down the editor and relaunch it. OK, back here, let's go to open. So we're going to go back to our inventory item widget. And here we have our clicked event. Let's just go from hello. We're going to go ahead and, for now, just go ahead and get our player character. And obviously, we want to cast this to the inventory shop tutorial character or we have our function we could also do the third person character because it's derived from our uh, inventory shop tutorial character then we want to call test use and here we have the class so for the time being i want to let's go ahead and just copy this guy here because it's our if you recall our item data structure so let's split it and just pass in the class Okay, let's see uh, what happens. 
So we press control space. Now we need to go to window. Uh, where is it? Output log. That brings up that. And one, I'll do that in a separate video. And right, let's just give it a try. So we pick it up, press I, click on it, R test string. So as you can see, without actually using spawn actor, we were able to call and print out this test string. So we now have the functionality kind of set up for us to be able to really use it. So that way when we click on the actor or we click on the item in our inventory, I want us to go, I guess for the time being, just to make everything safe, because I'm not entirely sure how to actually do this in Blueprint properly without it kind of screwing everything up. I don't know what the issue is. I'll have to tinker around with it more, but I would like to do it just directly in Blueprint and then make the call however needed. But what we're going to do for the sake of the tutorial is have a function that we call on our character that pretty much does what we just did right here for us. And then just going to call, you know, whatever function we have to actually give an effect on our character. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through, remove the else statements, and rename the function so if something that makes sense. So let's try, instead of test use, let's do use item. I think that's a better name. So let's replace that, like so. And let's go to our item.h. We want to remove the test function. And what we can do over here is in our interactable interface, we can create another function. It's going to be a virtual void. Let's do a, let's see, what would be a good name here? I guess just use item or use. Yeah, we'll do use item. Or no, let's do use just for, a, I feel like it's going to be, it's going to be more generic. And we want to pass in our character as a parameter so we know where to make the call back to. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that, paste it in. And because I don't necessarily want every actor to implement this function like we do here, I want it to just have an empty braces because again, it is a void. We don't have to have a return type or anything. And the last thing I want to do is copy this forward declaration and just move it to the top of the class like so, just to keep it nice and clean. And now we can go ahead and implement this use function in our item class. So what we're gonna do is virtual void use and override it then obviously create our implementation ue log log temp warning text using item now we can percent s and just print out the whatever to dereference and do get name so that way we know what the item name is okay so we have our function we have the implementation let's go ahead and i don't know why you're open let's go ahead and just call use like so and i do not want to print this out actually so we're just gonna copy and paste it in like so and use takes in a character which is this or sorry it takes in an inventory shop tutorial character so we're just gonna pass in this Alrighty. so i kind of want to rename the parameter here from item to something else because i want to name this to item so let's change it to Item subclass. That way it also makes a little bit more sense inside of Blueprint as well. So we're going to just replace item with item subclass like that and get rid of the CDO in front of item. Okay. Now before I close down the editor to recompile, I want to enable live coding. So when I press Control alt f 11 we, you know, go through and do that. And can I cancel this? Yes, I can. Awesome. So we're going to go to, uh, crap, where was it? Build? I might have gone to, that's a good question. Where's the project? I think it's project settings. Search for live coding. No. Maybe it's in the editor preferences. There it is. So editor preferences, go down here, enable live coding, check it. And I'm going to restart the editor. So I'm going to close it on down and recompile and relaunch just to plug everything back up and make sure it works. All right, let's reopen the asset. 
go to the graph and get rid of this test use. We're going to call use item. And here we have item subclass, so we just plug it on in, compile and save, and we should get a log down here whenever we click on it. Let's pick these both up. Click default underscore item or BP item 1C and default BP item C. So that is working correctly. Can I drag this down here somewhere? Oh, cool. Uh, I'm still, I'm, I'm so kind of lost in the whole UE4 uh, docking and everything. I'm, I mean, UE5 docking, it's confusing me because I want to bring this details panel out to where it kind of like stays when it's open. I want to click on something and have it stay. So I'm probably going to do some Googling on figure that all out. But anyways, we are pretty much done here. I'm just going to remove this hello since we know that, you know, it is in fact working and getting called and we are done. So that's going to be all for this video. And the next video, we're going to go through and add some actual functionality when we call use. So what I want to do, I don't know if I mentioned it previously, but I just want to, for the time being, have a simple health and a, uh, what do you call it? A health and food, essentially. So that way, you know, one item might give you some food. One item might give you some water, or sorry, some health, whenever you go to use them. And then we want to make sure we destroy it out of our inventory. Because I do want to rearrange our inventory as well, so that way it's kind of, uh, like when we press I, I kind of want to fill it a little bit with grids maybe. I, I don't entirely know. That would just be empty slots. Make it a uh, slot-based system for implementing dragging and dropping. I don't fully know yet. Again, not really much of a widget tutorial, more so, well, also I don't know how to do it yet, more so just interacting with your inventory. You can customize the inventory itself however you want. And then from here, I want to move on to the basic shop. So that's going to be all for this video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below where I have a Team Deathmatch series for all of my, for uh, Team Deathmatch series where we create Team Deathmatch using C++ primarily with Unreal Engine 4, and you get early access to pretty much all of my videos. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord that's also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So, I'll see you in the next video.